Julie, this memoir, this audio memoir is really incredible. It's called, But First God. And I have a lot of questions about your story, but I want to start with your decision to put this project together. What led you to it? Well, when I finally found Jesus um, in 2018, I had never owned a Bible and I was gifted one from um, a friend who was my one of my favorite cameramen working in TV news who became a pastor in Boston. And I found it uh, very daunting and intimidating and very big. And I thought, oh, I'm going to listen to an audio version of the Bible. And the only one I could find was um, a King James version that sounded like I was, you know, listening to Shakespeare <laughs> and a very, you know, Shakespearean actor's voice. So I actually called up Simon and Schuster because I had written a children's book um, in twenty that came out in 2018. And I offered them, I said, you know, I would do for free. I would read the new international version of the Bible for free because then I thought, um, I'll, I'll get through the Bible, you know, if I have to do it. That's a great, it's and a great I, way to do it. <laughs> yeah. And they were not interested in that, but they were interested in hearing um, my faith journey and making that an audio memoir. So I was, you know, surprised that that was something that they thought anybody would be interested in. And, in, and I said, yeah, I'll, I'll do it. Well, I mean, your your story is really incredible, and, and it's interesting to me because hearing it framed, you know, you went through 48 years of your life ignoring God, essentially, ignoring that part of who you are now, and I think it's it's so fascinating to consider what that was like, and obviously, being a public figure during a, a chunk of that time, how would you describe yourself and your outlook on everything before Jesus? I was so focused on this world, and I didn't acknowledge that there was any other world beyond um, the world that we live in. And I was very focused on my false idol then, which was work, my career, my job, um, and that's who I was. And any um, blessing that came my way, I thought that it was something that I did to earn it and that I deserved it. And it was by my own hard work, you know, or luck. I believed in like luck. And um, I was just never thinking about God. Wow. And, you know, you, you obviously get into a lot of this and I want people to to get this audio memoir and listen to it because it's it's powerful. When you were growing up, you know, was God any part of your life at all? You know, family life, was it spoken about? You know, I'm curious, sort of your your early years. My early years. So my mom um, decided at age 17, she wanted uh, to practice Catholicism. And when she decided this, you know, her mom was a practicing Buddhist. So, you know, I grew up and I always saw my mom wear a crucifix around her neck and my dad wore a cross, um, but he never talked about Jesus or God or religion. Um, he's like, he was very traditional, old school um, immigrant, you know, Chinese dad. And my parents in their bedroom had a crucifix on the wall and we had never gone to a church service. And my mom said, uh, as I got older, she said, you know, I never wanted to choose your religion for you because I chose on my own when I was 17. So my oldest sister, who's six years older than me, was baptized. But then when my next sister was born and I was born, my mother didn't have us baptized because she thought this is a personal choice for my children that they should make on their own. Yeah, no, that's and, and a lot of parents are there. You know, it's I have an eight and an eleven year old, and you know, we we bring them to church every week. We do devotions every day with them. You know, it's been really sort of important for me to figure out how do I fill in the gaps that maybe and my parents my parents were great. They were Christian parents. They raised me up. But what were things that I could do now in this culture to maybe help them? And you know, but I look at your story. You you reach fame, this pinnacle of success. You know, your talk show. You have Big Brother. And at age 48, you have this journey unfold and you move into what you're talking about now, which is a Christian faith. 
what what was the journey like? Was there an epiphany moment for you? I know there were a series of events that were going on. Was it more of a an actual journey? Take us through that shift in perspective. The journey was like a child, a newborn, you know, learning how to crawl. Um, so it started with me going church shopping, if you will. I went to um, a few different churches uh, to to attend their Sunday service to see what it was like. And um, I found the right church after a couple of weeks, and it was a Presbyterian. It, I still go now. It's a Presbyterian church. I found the sermons very easy to understand. And then it started with um, Bible study classes. It started with YouTube videos from a wonderful Bible teacher, um, a British preacher by the name of David Pawson. And he breaks down each book of the Bible and in these like 40 minute, you know, um, classes that he had. Then uh, they were recorded in the 90s. And then when the pandemic happened, and I started, a girlfriend of mine sent me, you know, Hope for Each Day by Billy Graham. So I was reading daily devotionals. Um, but I, the connection was like, okay, I'd read it and then I wouldn't think about it the rest of the day and then I'd move on. And if you asked me the next morning, what did you read yesterday? I wouldn't remember. Um, and I started to pray. And in the beginning, my prayer sounded like a Dear Santa letter, you know, like asking for things instead of thanking for things. And then, um, but I would say really two years into it when the pandemic hit and I was at home all day, that's when I had the time to really dedicate to delving into the wor- into the word. And it was the weekly Bible study Zoom classes that my friend and his wife who run a church in Boston that they invited me to that I started attending every week and I could ask questions and I could always test text them with questions because, you know, I was a newbie. Um, and it was during that pandemic time. And my mom had moved in with us for six months because uh, we had just lost my dad unexpectedly. And my mom and I studying the word together, having, you know, a partner to do that with. That's when I really started to understand uh who God is and who I am and why I'm why I am here and how he has blessed me all my, my whole life while I was ignoring him and given me the jobs I've had the platforms you know the career so that I could get to where I am today to use any and every platform being a public figure and declaring my declaring Jesus my lord and savior you know one of the big things I learned is if you do not declare publicly, you know, who he is to you and what he has done for you, why should he go before God the Father when, you know, it's my, t- my time is up here on earth? Um, so I have to stand, you know, firm and say it loud and say it proud, you know, what he has done for me and who he is. Um, and that's not the most uh, Hollywood is not the most inviting space for that. <laughs> I was just going to ask you that because it it is, I mean, and, and having friends and, and watching others kind of go through in media. I mean, you're in both spaces, right? It, it's media and Hollywood. And, you know, there's a lot of claims that, you know, Hollywood is unfriendly or maybe people just don't know. And so it's foreign to them. Has that part been challenging for you? Because you have gracefully really gone into this and it feels very natural and you're you're there doing it but i can't imagine it's always easy you know it has been surprisingly um people who i didn't know how they were going to react um have all been surprisingly um super supportive and like so excited for me you know when someone says you know i finally found like my purse purpose and my maker and god who wouldn't want to support that now I don't know if they're going to buy a project from me where, you know, it's, <laughs> but Simon and Schuster, they did, they, they can't, they offered it. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Um, yeah. So, you know, let people surprise you. Um, I, I like that. I like that a lot. And, 
You know, you, you mentioned prayer and it's so it's so interesting looking at culture because you kind of have a situation where, where culture is struggling and, and people are desperate to find meaning and it, it's heartbreaking to watch that. And then at the same time, you're watching these mass baptisms unfold. You're seeing these spiritual events. You're hearing stories like yours um, that are really just encouraging to hear. Um you know, what do you make of that of that dynamic? I'm sure you, you're watching it as well as, as a fellow believer and seeing that. And it, it's just, it's an interesting dichotomy. I feel like it is so inspiring to watch and to see. And I feel like it is happening at this time because we are living in dark times. And it is in the darkest times, in the darkest situations that the light shines the brightest, that it is is the easiest to see the light. And we know, so many of us know that the only way we can wake up each morning with purpose is to have hope. And if you don't have God in your life, how do you live with hope? Mm. If you are separated from God, that is a bleak future. That is a bleak outlook. And no one wants to live in that space. And it's also peace. Yeah. We want to live in peace. Well, you know, absolutely. And you know, certain elements of your of your story, you know, things you've gone through, obviously in, in the public eye, the issue of forgiveness comes up for me because when you go through a journey like this, I think forgiveness, you know, I was a lifelong Christian and then I had to own it for myself at a certain point. And when I when I look at that and I think, okay, when did I really understand forgiveness? How has that part of your journey been? Because I would imagine there have been things you know, you, that you have to forgive that you see in the press or you see people saying about you or, you know, just that, that nature that comes along with your position. It's been very freeing for me, you know, when I didn't know the power of forgiveness, um, me sitting in the corner, like stewing with anger, eating away at my heart is not hurting anybody except for myself. It's not productive and it's not healthy. And combined with the power of forgiveness was uh, learning not to judge. So when I look back at, you know, um, a past wrong or perceived wrong that I felt, you know, was that I was hit with, I don't know why someone did what they did. Uh, I don't know their motivation. I can't judge, you know, what they came to the table with to to do that. Um, I felt what I felt and I have to move on and just uh, instead of the reaction should be is to um, give them love. When you put out love, you, you get back what you put out, right? So when you put out love, maybe that softens their heart. Maybe you give them pause. Maybe you show them, wow, the power of God. Because anyone who knew me before I knew Christ knew that like, I could... I could carry a grudge. It would never go to go out of fashion with me. So <laughs> it was just something, you know, what a, what, what a fool I was before that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, I, I used to be even, even growing up in the church, you know, not understanding forgiveness, always trying to get people back. You know, I'm going to get them back. I'm going to win. I'm going to have the best comeback. And, you know, when you really have Christ in you and you really embrace that, you realize everything you just said is true, that showing love. I mean, Jesus says, love your enemies, right? It's not just love the people that are kind of friendly to you. It's, it's love your enemies. And that's a challenging thing to do. You know, as we round out to a close, I have to ask you, when it comes to But First God, what are you hoping people take away? What is success for you for this project? I hope people understand that it is never too late to start your own personal, unique relationship with God. And if you already have one, to draw closer. And if you don't have one, and you listen to my journey, you have to know it should not be intimidating. You know, as someone who was 48 and thought she knew the world and uh, knew a, a little bit about a lot of things in the world because of my journalism background and all that, it, I was a newbie at, you know, almost age 50. So I want people to know that all we are all here to have a personal relationship with God. That is our purpose. You find God, you draw close to God and he will draw closer to you and your purpose and peace your purpose will become so clear and peace that transcends all understanding will be laid upon you. 
well, with Julie, God, I, you can do anything. There is nothing that is impossible. I love that. I love that. And, and I think that's the piece that so many people today are, are desperate for, and they're looking everywhere to find it. And you're here sharing your journey and pointing people toward that. Really appreciate you taking the time today and joining us. Godspeed. God bless you. Thank you so much for this time together. I really appreciate you.